and by faith in his name, this man whom you see and know his name has made strong. And the faith that comes through it has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away, and that the Lord may grant you times of refreshment, and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the times of universal restoration, of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. Moses, for Moses said, A prophet like me will the Lord, your God, raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who spoke from Samuel and those afterwards also announced these days, You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your ancestors when he said to Abraham, In your offspring all the families on the earth shall be blessed. For you first, God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. The word of the Lord. Amen. Responsible song is number eight. O oh Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O oh Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O oh Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? O oh Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. You have made him a little less than the angels, and crowned him with the glory of honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. O oh Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. All sheep and oxen, yes, the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the seas. O oh Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. of these things. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Like I said the other day, all the resurrection appearances, they recognize him, but they recognize him with difficulty. He, they thought he was a ghost, and he had to reassure them that he, uh, he, he was Jesus. And then he ate with them, and just as they before, they recognized him in the breaking of bread, and he explained the scriptures to them, and he sent them on a mission. And uh, I love the word incredulous, incredulous for sheer joy. And if we could really believe in the resurrection and really believe that our loved ones, when they leave this earth, they go to heaven, and heaven is half as good as the Bible says it is, then we'd be incredulous for them because uh, all their suffering is over, they're gone to glory, they live like the angels. It's, it's a fantastic faith that we believe in, you know, because, because uh, you know, life on earth is tough. It's like a boot camp, and then life in heaven is so wonderful. For Easter, I got an email from um, a friend of mine. Um, um, he, he, um, he used to be in school. He was a classmate of my brother in the seminary, and he was ordained for a number of years, and uh, he left the priesthood. <laughs> and he had a brother in my class, and we're still very good friends. And we're with Stephen, uh, you know, he used to hang around my house when I, when I was a young lad, and he was a great, great character. But anyway, he, he was a property manager, a manager down in the island of St. Croix. He's still down there doing it. Uh, and uh, in the side, he trained horses. And he, he was, uh, he, he trained them and whatever way, he used the sea to train them. Uh, and and he, uh, anyway, he's a great character and I've seen him, kept up with him over the years. But he sent me this email and uh, I didn't know this, but anyway, this, this is very good. And if you like, like an Easter story, if you like. This Easter Saturday morning, sitting on top of a hill, looking out over the sea as the sun rises, I am amazed at the beauty and become one with the light of the sun. A few years ago, I got stung by 300 honeybees. Unconscious, I found myself on the other side. Met my mother who had passed years ago in a beautiful soft golden light. I noticed my way of expressing and being, and being me, was out of harmony with the sea. Mom called, Stephen, in a loving, firm tone. In my honest repentance, I found myself in the most beautiful light that my eyes had ever seen. I had never entered, it had never entered my mind that I could be in a place so beautiful feel so whole, complete, perfect, beyond words. I feel one with God. I clearly saw I was, was more dim in light than my mom. As I repented and changed my tone, my attitude, my light became brighter and brighter until I was up at the same level of light she is at. This morning, as I watched the sunrise, on the side of the hill of my bare feet, I became one with the light. This is the time Jesus was in the tomb. I thought I live in my body. My soul says is in that heavenly light dimension. Walking back down the hill, I remember the two men on the road to Amos saying, Did not our hearts burn within us? with the joy as we walked along the road. I felt like that as I walked back down the hill to care for my horses. I clearly felt that I am invited to live that life now, of not body, mind, but in my soul state of light and love. I can easily do that mentally and physically because my soul is directly connected to the one source that is God. This is the best Easter ever. Thank each of you who reads my Easter experience. I wish you to know that you, too, can only be in light, in life, in love, to know that every person on the planet of all time and space is always in eternal light, love, peace, oneness, harmony, joy, courage, strength, simple love.
the cowboy Steve. Anyway, I think it's a good expression of what the impossible experience, you know, uh, his near-death experience, and, and uh, it's blessed that we have those testimonies of so many people that tell us that this life is not all there is. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for Stuart Suffer for whom the Mass has been offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for Jimmy and Diane, for um, Ralph Baldwin, for John um, Kulklak, and uh, for um, Sophia, um, Kurt's uh, granddaughter, and for all our sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the continued renewal of our church through the pod process, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, the free world to stand against the aggression of Vladimir Putin and for an end to all this innocent suffering and war in Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the right to life of the unborn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's guidance and direction in all that we say and do, we pray Lord. to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For cures for cancer, Parkinson's, kidney disease, Alzheimer's, ALS, multiple sclerosis, and other catastrophic illnesses, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this Easter joy. May we be incredulous with sheer joy because of the good news of the resurrection to Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread and life. Blessed be God of bread. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all this holy church. Graciously be pleased, O Lord, to accept the sacrificial gifts we offer joyfully, both for those who have been reborn and in hope of your increased help from heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right in your house. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to claim you, Lord. But on this day above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with past and joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Today, a couple of quotes from St. Francis the same bishop and doctor of our church, he said, I often speak with my teacher, Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament, because I can learn from him. Jesus is the teacher of the science of holiness. I go to him because I would like to learn from him how to become a saint. When you have received him, stir up your heart to do him homage. Speak to him about your spiritual life, gazing upon him in your soul, where he is present for your happiness. Welcome him as warmly as possible and behave outwardly in such a way that you actually will give proof to all of his presence. You therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and living sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant your peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Louis, our Bishop, and all those who hold holding to the truth, 
hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For then we offer you the sacrifice of praise of the offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, sorry, missed the peace, celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, our spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through the merits of prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to your God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice as father's victor. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, <coughs> Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look now on our sins, for on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit, as offered to the sign of Christ Jesus. Lamb of God, you take the place of sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ be the same for eternal life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayer that this most holy exchange, by which you have redeemed us, may bring us your help in this present life, and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for me. Killed a cripple in Jesus' name. Luke, a physician, describes in great physical detail how the man's feet and ankles became strong, and he jumped to his feet and began to walk. Now the man had been crippled and had spent his life begging at the gate. People were very familiar with him. So seeing him jumping and praising God must have had an impact on the Jews that saw him. And there was no doubt what had happened. Peter reached out to him and said, Rise up and walk. And taking his hand, he lifted him up. Peter was acting on the power of healing given to him and the other apostles by Jesus. Peter's exact words were, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The very words that were used to insult Christ while he was on earth. But now, Peter is waving it like a banner. Next, the man grabbed the shoulders of Peter and John, and all the people gathered on Solomon's portico were greatly amazed. So when Peter saw the people's reaction, he said, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Why are you looking so intently as if we performed this miracle by our own power? Peter responded to this great crowd by giving a sermon. I can imagine you would have done the same thing. <laughs> Never miss an opportunity. <laughs> Peter's point is that Jesus healed all sorts of people during his ministry on earth. So why would it seem strange 
that he wouldn't continue to heal from heaven. Peter begins his sermon with God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. By opening this sermon this way, he's saying, this isn't about me and what I have done. This is about Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied. Peter boldly points to the Jewish people and pointing out the fact that Pilate was determined to let Jesus go, but the Jewish mob insisted on crucifying him. This doesn't mean that the Jewish people alone were responsible for the crucifixion of Christ. The Romans, who were Gentiles, were also responsible. The Jews could not have crucified Christ without the Romans. God made certain that both Jew and Gentile share in the guilt of Jesus' death. If you believe that Jesus died for our sins, then we must also point the finger at ourselves. Peter points to the Jews for denying Christ in front of Pilate, but we know Peter denied Christ three times. One of the ironies of the crucifixion of Jesus is that while the crowd rejected Jesus, they embraced a criminal and a murderer named Barabbas. To the Jews gathered around him, Peter says, I know you did it in ignorance. That is, ignorance of God's plan. If we sin in ignorance, it's still a sin. But it's different from sin done with full knowledge. Most of the Jews felt that the fact that the Messiah died as a common criminal was the reason they could not accept him. Whereas Peter was claiming the reverse was true. It was only because Jesus was crucified that he qualified to be the Savior. Peter was saying that the prophets foretold of the suffering of the Messiah. Throughout Peter's sermon, he spoke of Jesus as Savior. The apostles had seen his death and resurrection, and at least some of his audience had heard Jesus teach and seen him perform miracles. So to Peter, the only appropriate reaction from his audience was to repent. For this audience, many of them devout Jews, repentance meant turning to God by accepting Jesus as their Savior and Messiah, whom God had chosen. In Acts chapter 2, Peter may repent a word of hope. He told them that they had done wrong, but they could turn it around and become right with God and be converted. Peter knew the necessity of conversion, of God bringing new life to us. Being a Christian isn't turning over a new leaf, but it is being a new creation in Jesus Christ, that your sins may be blotted out. That was the first benefit of repentance Peter presented to them. The one who repents and is converted is forgiven their sins and the record itself erased. The next thing he says is, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Peter made it clear that Jesus will remain in heaven until the times of restoration of all things. I didn't know what that meant. In terms of the New Testament understanding, the restoration would occur at the second coming of the Messiah in the last days, and then everything would be restored. Peter also warns of the danger of rejecting Jesus. He speaks of the words of Moses, a prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you among your own kin. To him you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to the prophet will be cut off from the people. Many prophets from the Old Testament spoke of the covenant with God. The Jewish people of Peter's day were familiar with the prophecy of Moses, but some thought that the prophet would be someone diff excuse me, different from the Messiah. In his sermon, Peter insisted that the promise of Abraham was fulfilled in the Messiah Jesus. The prophecy implies that the Jews would be only the first to receive the message of salvation. As we know, the Gentiles would come later. When I read these chapters in Acts describing Peter's preaching and healing, as one who has been 
a witness to the resurrection of Christ and urging the people to repent and seek the salvation of God, I think of Jesus pointing to Peter and saying, on this rock, I will build my church. Peter, the first apostle to call Jesus the Messiah. Peter, the first pope. Amen. Very good, May, but I hate to disappoint you. I've never given a sermon where 3,000 people want to <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come on, Holy Spirit.